how can I say, uh, just the ability of the Lord to aid us in our walk with God and to um, be able to serve him, especially in the hour that we're in. We're in the, as one writer said, we're in the last days, and the scripture is clear uh, that in the last days, perilous times shall come, and they certainly have. And what we have to do is um, have a spiritual mindset to uh, make our calling. Could you let me a little bit more, Nick? I'm going to try to speak softly tonight. Uh, make our calling, saints, and our election sure. Praise the Lord. That should be the aim uh, and or the goal of the uh, child of God, especially in, this, in these last days. I think it was Paul that said uh, that we have to uh, redeem the time, saints, for the days are evil. I wish that there was more individuals that had an interest. Now, this is just a general statement in this hour, an interest in God's word. And understand that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And one of the, um, one of the proofs uh, that people are simply not interested uh, in receiving the word of God, the scriptures, which are able to make one wise, as the scripture said, unto salvation, it is because uh, people just don't attend church as they used to. Um, and then also, when sometimes when we are when people are in church, they are preoccupied. This is just a general statement with things, places. Um, how can I say? As the scripture said, when when Jesus was teaching, I think it was Martha was cumbered about with much cares, and that is your example of. One maybe being in the presence of God, but yet being concerned about doing work and not doing, how can I say, the thing that is most important, and that is receiving God's word. Can the church say amen? amen. So this is simply, brothers and sisters, a manifestation of our day. Now, I know there's some who are busy. I'm not saying that, but if I'm voluntarily uh, trying not to receive God's word, I am in error. Can the church say amen? And I am doing what the scripture calls willful sin. And we don't even know this is in the Bible, but yet it's still, it is in the scripture. Praise the Lord. But be that as it may, that's not our subject on the night. Our subject is the doctrine of holiness, which we're going to continue to uh, try to uh, teach on tonight, which is a subject that I think is very, very important. In, our, in these days, because the Bible is clear that we have to follow peace with all men and holiness with, without which no man shall see the Lord. And holiness is not resonating in the minds of the apostolic believer as it used to because there was a time in our history when God was our life. Amen. When our life revolved around the service of walking with God, the discipline of our vocation. Can the church say amen? amen? Nowadays, people are more concerned about their natural life, their natural vocation, what people are doing, what they're seeing that is around them, instead of us concentrating on our spirit man. Can the church say amen? amen. Be that as it may, I want you to go with me to the book of Jose. We're going to try to get into this Bible class on tonight, the book of Hosea, chapter number four, and verses number six, as a place to start. Hosea, chapter four, and verses six, as a place to start on tonight. Can the church say amen? Praise the Lord. Now, Hosea is, this is one of the minor prophets Praise the Lord, and in particular, Jose was the prophet that showed to a certain degree the agony of God with Israel, because Jose had to be the one, let me try to find this on you tonight, praise the Lord, there it is, Jose had to be the prophet that um, had to rescue 
if memory serves, we correct his backslidden wife from the chopping block. Or, and or she had to, he had to rescue her sister Williams from being executed for her fornication and her adultery. It was, number one, he told, um, he told the prophet to go and marry Gomer and then produce children with her. And in producing children with her, these children uh, were, to a certain degree, an example of the fallenness of Israel. And so when you read in the book of Hosea, you will see a constant theme is that Ephraim is used. And Ephraim, brothers and sisters, is a example of the backslider. The Bible says Ephraim is as a backslidden or backsliding heifer. Now, if you know anything about a heifer, a heifer is a, if memory serves me correct, it is a female cow. And what the cow would do when it did not want to plow or it did not want to work, it would simply sit on its hinder parts and it would, uh, as the plowman was trying to, or the, the individual was trying to pull, it would just sit and it would, how can I say, it would lock up. It would show a level of stubbornness. So when it deals with the scriptures talk about Ephraim, it's dealing with her condition being backslidden in or Israel. And so what God did, I'm just simply trying to show you this so you can understand what a lack of holiness produces. It produces a mentality of stubbornness. It produces a mentality, Sister Hayes, that I'm going to do my own thing. I'm not going to do the will of God. And so what you see with the life of, how can I say, Jose was that Jose was to a certain degree exhibiting to Israel the relationship that they had between God and themselves. And that is that because Israel was backslidden, God had to continue to go and rescue her just as Jose had to go and rescue his wife when she would not be faithful to him. Are you with me today? So I want you to understand this is what will produce this condition as we read the scripture. This condition of a unholy lifestyle is always, how can I say, seen because there is no knowledge. This is the reason why I made the point about when we first came to Bible class, individuals that do not make the effort to receive the word of God cannot be ultimately, Sister Julian, all that God wants. Because if we're not there where God is feeding, they cannot know what to do. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God, if that makes sense. Let's pick it up here now in verses number six. Read, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. What destroys the life of the believer? The lack of knowledge. The knowledge is the know-how. The know-how comes from being taught. See, knowledge is information. Wisdom is the proper application of knowledge used to the glory of God. But first, one has to get the knowledge. Can the church say amen? Jesus said it like this, my sheep hear my voice, and what do they do? They follow me. Well, first of all, the sheep have to hear. What are the sheep hearing? The word of God. The word of God produces what? Wisdom. The wisdom of God gives us knowledge, if that makes sense. So Israel's problem was that they were not receiving the knowledge of God, the know-how, the wisdom of God. And so it was, it was producing an unholy lifestyle. Can the church say amen? That God had to continue to rescue her because of her backslidden condition. Can the church say amen? Does that make sense? Praise the Lord. Let's read it now. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Read. I will also reject thee. When a person rejects the knowledge of God, God will reject them. Read. That thou mayest be no priest. Read to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law 
of thy God. So the priests had did what? They forgot the law of God. And in forgetting the law of God, it produces what? Unholiness among themselves, but also among what? The people. Read. Also forget what? Thy children. So we're reading this scripture simply to show the importance of receiving the knowledge of God that produces somebody say holiness. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go now. I'm going to move quickly through this. Now, in doing that, saints, receiving the knowledge, receiving the information, it can allow us to perfect that which we need to do in the eyesight of God. You see, our lifestyle has to be perfected. We have to learn how to walk with God. Praise the Lord. It's just like children. Children have to learn how to walk. They have to learn how to talk. They have to learn how to eat. Same thing goes for the believer. And it is a lifelong endeavor because in, in this life, we will always be contending with the fallen nature. The fallen nature doesn't leave once I receive the Holy Ghost. It's simply under the influence of the Holy Spirit as I walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Praise the Lord. So the knowledge of God gives us the know-how, the wisdom, if, we, if, one, if, if one applies it right, as to what God desires so that I can perfect my craft. My craft is my vocation as I live for God, if that makes sense. And this next scripture is going to make that point. Praise the Lord. So the point is simply this. If I don't get the knowledge, praise the Lord, then how can I perfect what God wants me to know, if that makes sense? All right, so let's go now to 2 Corinthians. This verse, all of us will probably be able to quote this if we um, have been walking with God for any period of time. This is a very familiar scripture. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Now, I've been saying this for years. There's some things that God will do, and there's some things that we have to do with the help of God. Praise the Lord. All right? Now, remember, we have promises. Now, when he says, what he says in verses numbers one is directly tied to what he previously said in chapter number six. And that was the promise for you and I to be sons and daughters. If we come out, somebody say, from among them, have no fellowship with uh, light with darkness, nor neither the have no communion with the unfruitful works of darkness. Does that make sense? We do not have concord with Belial. The term Belial means the sons of Satan or the sons of the devil. We do not have agreement with the trends, the fashions, the behaviors, the patterns, the customs of the world. Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we're teaching this. I, does that make sense? That means our mindset now has changed and I have now taken a different, how can I say, spiritual mentality about how I'm supposed to serve God. Amen? Now I'm going to say something about holiness. Holiness is not what you wear. Holiness is, is who you have. It affects what we put on. It affects how we behave. But it's not what we wear. Because a person could look the part but can have a bad spirit. I can wear a suit and be mean. <laughs> I can wear a suit and have a foul mouth. I can wear a suit and have wicked imaginations. I can wear a suit and hold somebody say grudges, anger, malice. Praise the Lord. So I don't want anybody to think that our holiness is simply the fact that I look like I'm saved. Can the church say amen? I could be judgmental. I can have all these issues that I need to somebody say, let the Holy Spirit help perfect me to do somebody say the right thing. Can you imagine having the Holy Ghost and never smile at anybody? Never say hallelujah. Never say praise the Lord. Always cantankerous. Mean spirited. Judgmental. That's a bad attitude. That's a dis because remember, that's a, disp that's a disposition. That's a mental disposition that affects one's behavior. Can the church say amen? 
all right? Let's pick it. I guess let's go all the way back to verses numbers um, 17 of the uh, 6. So you can, you can make the, somebody said, we're going to make the connection. Let's make the connection. Chapter 6, verse 17. Let's make the connection here. We can, we can read up further, but we're not. Let's make the connection. Read, it says, wherefore, come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Now we dealt with the scripture. All right, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And in us, touching not the unclean thing allows God to receive me or accept me. Read it now. And, be, and, and in me being accepted and received, he says, I will be a father unto you. Now this, now look at this. There are very few times that when God deals with the church, he deals with in the individual. In this case, normally he talks about me, us, or we. Here he says you. So this is something that every individual that is a part of the body of Christ has to embrace. They have to embrace the design of God of coming out from among those that God has, how can I say, designed for us to separate ourselves from. As I've been saying for so long, the enemy wants everybody to get in the same melting pot. This is exactly what he wants to be. He wants what I would like to call, how can I say, the spirit of, uh, if, the, if this is a word, I may have made one up, tolerism or tolerating everything and saying everything's the same. But when you become a Christian, you get born again of water and of spirit, aut automatically it denotes separation. Can the church say Amen. And holiness is what is going to produce that separation. Two words, holiness and sanctification. Sanctification is the act of living holy. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's read it now. We can be what? Sons and what? Daughters. That includes everybody. Read, saith the Almighty. Now read verses numbers 1. Having therefore these promises. Now what was those promises? to be sons, and to be daughters. Read. Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. So there is filthiness of the flesh, which namely is fornication and sexual uncleanness, sins that are done with the body. I have to cleanse myself from it. Are you with me? There's no children in here, but I, some, but I'm, so I'm not going to be graphic. Those are things that deal with the flesh. I have to what? Cleanse myself. Then he says, of spirit. Those are, those are things that are unclean or sinful that come out of the human nature, such as hatred, malice, guile, envy, backbiting, strife, debate, seditions. These are things that come out of the human nature. One scripture said, when he was dealing with the, uh, Paul, I mean, not James was dealing with the church, he said, ye bite and devour. What do you mean? They were talking about one another. And some saints don't believe gossip is a sin. If we're going home talking about everybody in the church, we're in sin. It's just that simple. Because I'm sowing discord. Praise the Lord. Amen. If I'm going home and I'm telling my wife, I can't stand her. She's this, that, and the other. I'm going to the lake that burns with fire. And I shouldn't be preaching. I shouldn't be a pastor. Because that's not right. Now, I don't do that. But the point I'm trying to make is that these are practices that sometimes people think, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying what I feel. Well, what you feel and what I feel is two different things from what the Bible said. Especially if I'm sowing into the mind and the spirit of somebody else to make someone else think wrong of somebody. Or even if it is right, it's still not my place to be trying to make them, somebody else think that way. It's like this. If you're married, I'm going to help you out. Anybody married in here? I'm married. If I'm married to tomorrow, what sense does it make for me to go and talk about a woman that I married? 
I make myself look crazy. You married her. So why are you going to go talk about your wife to somebody else? People do this stuff all the time. Am I talking good that I say something wrong? It's the way it is. I'm telling you the truth. Praise the Lord. But then I'm going to go right up next to and say I love you. When all I did was it fill somebody else's head with thoughts about the woman. Then My thought is this. I'm, I'm like this. Why are you telling me? She's not my wife. You need to be taking that to Jesus. Or getting some counsel about how to fix one's own personal issues. So I'm talking about true holiness. See, I'm, we're talking about holiness now. We're talking about some real holiness. And see, this is what the fathers taught us. But a lot of people have gotten away from that. And this has nothing to do about what I put on. This has to do with my spirit man. What is in my heart. Can the church say amen? All right? Mm-hmm. Dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from all footings of the flesh and spirit. Doing what? Perfecting. You mean holiness has to be perfected? Yes, it does. Once you receive the Holy Ghost, then God's Holy Spirit in you has to perfect your lifestyle as you walk in it. It's okay for the believer to admit that there's some things about me that I need to be perfected in. And it doesn't matter how long I've been saved. I could be saved for 50, 60 years. I could be saved for 10 years, 5 years, and still need God to perfect some things in me. The Bible said he will perfect that which concerns me. There's some things about District God Richardson that may need to be perfected. Praise the Lord. And about all his people. Can the church say amen? And it's Bible classes like this that should help us to think introspectively about, okay, what do I need to do to be better? Because I can always look into God's word and see more. Can the church say amen? Does that make sense? All right. Mm-hmm. Yes, that would be sufficient. Let's go now to 1 John chapter number 5. We have overcome the world. We have overcome the world through walking in holiness. Praise the Lord. We have overcome, somebody said, overcome the world. Overcome it. You got to overcome it. The Bible said, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. Oh, no man anything, but somebody say love. All right. I guess we need to uh, pick it up in verses number three. Chapter number five, verses three, to begin with. I think you're getting it. You're starting to get the... Uh, Get the picture, Nick, because sometimes I say five, then I go back a few verses. So, <laughs> Amen. All right. Read it now. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Now, he's going to tell us what his commandment is and how to keep it. Read. And his commandments are not grievous. Now, if I feel, if an apostolic believer feels that the commandment of God are restrictive or grievous, it's because of their mindset. God does not restrict me from anything that I don't need restrictions from. He does not restrict me from things that bring life to me, that bring health to me. He only restricts us from destructive tendencies, destructive behaviors, destructive practices, if that makes sense. Praise the Lord. All right. For what? For, read, read with me. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. The born again experience over, is what allows us to overcome the world. So here's what you have to realize. When you receive, and I receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I baptize in Jesus' name, it automatically puts us at, at an advantage against the world. Because now, Sister Julian, we have the tools, the mechanisms, praise the Lord, to be able to overcome the practices that hinders the world. Amen? So the journey of the believer is to continue to buy in to what it takes to be an overcomer. The born-again experience gives us overcoming power. Amen? So now, Deacon, I have to, in my mind, I have to think I have to behave. 
I have to practice an overcomer's mentality. And what you're doing tonight in coming to Bible class and those who are tuning in, uh, they can't make it here, and allowing the word of God to speak to you, you are now being a practicing overcomer because you're taking the word of God in and then applying it to your life which gives you the ability that whatever challenges come, and they will, that you'll be able to overcome the world through the word of God. Now, if people are not tuned in and they're watching the will of fortune, then I, I can't help you there. But if we're hearing the word of God that produces life, then it can help me be overcoming. Why? Because everyone is going to have something that is going to challenge them. It could be one's own flesh. It could be one's own mind. We have to realize, we taught a Bible class on the nine dimensions or elements of the mind. We, we showed you in the Bible, there are nine different type of mindsets that the Bible talks about. One of them is a feeble mind. Many people have feeble minds. Anything that Satan or their flesh tells them they believe, that's a feeble mindset. Because we have to have the what? The mind of Christ. See, they told Jesus, and I preached about it on Sunday, they told Jesus that he cast out devils by the prince of devils. Did Jesus believe that? Why? Because he had the mind of God. He knew that he was God manifested in flesh that went about fulfilling the will of the eternal spirit that was in him. Are you with me? So what we have to do is condition our thinking. And I've been saying this for years, to think the way God wants me to think. Amen? God does not want the believer to get their mind to think what somebody says about them, what the world thinks we need to do, what the flesh wants to do. We have to think and we have to embrace God's word that will produce overcoming behaviors. Can the church say amen? And I've been saying this for years. You are not what people say you are. We have to be and say that we are what God says we are. What did God say concerning Israel? He said, I know my thoughts concerning you. I know what I think about you. I'm just trying to get you to think that way. It's what he's telling Israel. I know that I love you. I'm trying to get you to know I love you. You have a, you have a, uh, anybody raise kids in here? I'm on, anybody raise kids? Raise, if you've raised any kids, raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. When you were disciplining your kids, did they think they, did, did they think you loved them? Most, most cases, no. Because no chastisement for the present time seems joyous, but grievous, but it produces, as we showed you a few weeks ago, it produces behaviors that are profitable. In the natural, it does. And it produces holiness in the believer. I've been saying this for years. I don't know why people can't get it. I ain't saying nobody can't get it. I'm just trying to make a point. We have, people have to get this. When you get a whooping, God is saying, I love you. When God says, don't do this, do it this way, he's saying, I love you. He's saying, you're my child. Because if, if he didn't say nothing, that means, he don't, that means I'm not his child. He says that in the scripture. What is the first thing that happens when people hear something that, that, that they have to say, ouch? Why you say that? You hurt my feelings. That's not fair. I need, to, I need to do this and I need to go here. I need to, no. Amen? Because in many cases, I'm just carrying the issue wherever I go. If the issue is that I cannot accept correction, at some point, I'm going to have to take it whether I like it or not. The institutions of the penal system are full of individuals that couldn't nobody tell them what to do. So they did things in a system of law, some of them did, that caused them to be penalized. And when they didn't accept instruction, now they're being made. You wake up at this time. You eat at this time, 
you go to bed at this time. Because here's the point I've been saying. Everybody's going to listen to somebody. Amen? So what I'm trying to say is that holiness through the knowledge of God will produce the mentality of overcoming what we can do and hear what the Lord wants us to know. That's powerful. If people can just simply get this, and when God says something to them, stop sque being squeamish and, 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 and jumping and running, and I don't understand, and this hurts my feelings. Well, your feelings, my feelings is going to have to be hurt. I've sitting in plenty of Bible classes and felt condemned. And I was saved, striving to live holy, and still felt like, man, I need to do a little bit more. Can the church say amen? It's like that old, that adage, the, the step that Bishop used to always talk about. Walking with God is like walk, climbing steps. Okay? If you're going to climb steps, you have to lift your foot up. It's not, see, walking with God is not walking on a, a, a flat plane. It's an incline. <laughs> the highway of holiness is an incline. To whom much is given, much should be required. See, what God will do is that he will expose through his word practices that we don't even think that, our, our, that, that, we, that we should do as we hear his word. How many times you came to Bible class and heard something and you was doing something and you didn't even think it was necessarily wasn't wrong, but it just wasn't a good thing to do? And the Lord just gave you a little bit more insight and said, well, maybe I shouldn't go there. Maybe I shouldn't. What is that? That's perfecting holiness in the fear of what? The Lord. Can the church say amen? And it could be different things for different individuals. Can the church say amen? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's read it verses numbers uh, uh, four here. Let's get down to this. It says, for, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Read. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So your faith and your approach to God as you walk with him is what gives you the ability to overcome the world. You will overcome the world by the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The apostolic faith is designed to help the child of God overcome the world. The environment that is around us. Can the church say amen? And what God's people have to do is that we have to stop looking out and start looking in. I have never been concerned about what sinners are doing. Can the church say amen? What sinners are wearing, where they're going, what they're listening to. It doesn't matter because we are supposed to overcome that. See, the problem in many times, and I'm going to be honest with you, the problem in these cases, as we're growing and sometimes even with our young people, they're involved in environments, or they live around environments where everything that they see is of an outward sort. So now they're challenged with how do I live in this world and realize I'm not of the world. This scripture helps you. You've overcome the world through your faith. All you need to do is walk in your faith, Walk in what you know is right and have the right mindset that that doesn't matter because that is not going to produce ultimately holiness in your life. And here's the thing. If you know God, you can never unknow him. In the moment that a saved, born-again Christian makes the determination after knowing God that they want to take a different path, what they have to realize is that the hand of God will be against them for the rest of their life. They cannot prosper. Nothing, nothing good comes out of it. It's just that simple. Amen? When I got saved at 18 years old, if I was to walk away from God, any time between there and now, the hand of God would be against me. And I would not be able to have any happiness, any joy, this is the matter, any peace. Why? Because God's word is right. His hand will be against me. I've seen countless young people, not young people, but also saints that have decided that they're going to go a different path after knowing God. And know what happens? They go downhill fast. Look on Facebook. Look on Twitter. 
Anybody got a Twitter account? I don't. Look on Tweet, whatever, I don't know, whatever that stuff is. Twitch. Is that another one? Grace? Twitch? What is that? What? I don't know. Snapchat. TikTok. Facebook. And you're going to see a, full of a bunch of unhappy people that was born again, and now they try to fake it like they happy. You ain't happy out there. You are unhappy. Praise the Lord. There is no happiness other than the happiest state, as the Bible said, of the righteous. Can the church say amen? Praise the Lord. All right. Read, victory overcometh the uh, world, even your faith. Verses 5. Who is he? Now he's going to answer the question. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that what? He... But he says, but he that believeth that Jesus is the... Now, that's a question that he answers. Victoria, the only ones that overcome the world is he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. The only ones that overcome the world are those that receive the newborn experience through acknowledging Jesus as God the Father manifest in flesh. You want to be an overcomer? You want to be holy? Acknowledge Jesus. See, Jesus has caused me to overcome a whole lot of things. Jesus can help you overcome the bottle. He can help you overcome any addiction, any behavior, anger, whatever the case is. Any problem that comes our way, Jesus is the answer. Can the church say amen? Praise the Lord. Verse 6, read. This is he that came by what? Oh, wait, we don't want to deal with that. I'll leave, we're getting into another portion. Let's go now. Let's drop. No. Yes. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the third element here. Holiness is contending for what? Your faith. Somebody said, in order for you to be holy, you got to fight for what you believe in. The enemy is desiring to strip you of all that you know about God. The first thing we dealt with is the elements of holiness, which has two parts, separation from and dedication to. Then we gave you scriptures that the knowledge of God produces holiness. Now we're going to talk about saints that holiness is contending for your faith. You have to fight for your faith to be holy. Praise the Lord. Every day we wake up, we got to fight for what we believe in. We have to have a mindset that I'm going to be a fighter, a contender. Amen. I'm not going to let the enemy take what I know about God away from me. Praise the Lord. All right. When I tell you to go. 15. All right. Let's look at uh, chapter 2, verse 15. This is powerful here now. Read. Love not the world. Now, in loving not the world is an indication that you are fighting for what you are supposed to love. Because it's two things. Either you can love the world or you can love God. Amen? Two things. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't love the world, but why don't I ever see you? Well, every time we're in church, you, I'm somewhere else. Now, I'm going to talk about me. If I said, Sister Hayes, I love God, then you would expect me to be where God is, right? Can the church say amen? You would expect me to be doing what God said I'm supposed to be doing to prove my love for him. See, when I, what we have to realize, saints, God does not give me the right to tell him how to love and how to serve him. I've been saying this for years. It's a very basic element. But in sometimes people's mind, they feel that what they produce to God is good enough for him to accept. Well, God's not a man. He only has to accept what parameters he says he wants. Amen? Praise the Lord. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to break it down as simple as I can. Praise God. So if I don't, Sister Key, if I don't love the world, is an indication that I love God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Love not the world, neither the things that are what? It, what is in the world? You're going to read it right here. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If any man love the world, if I'm in love with sinners, their dance practices, 
Number one, we're, sa we're sanctified. We're not supposed to be dancing anyway, except in the spirit. Can the church say amen? Don't be cutting no step at home. We got the Holy Ghost. Can the church say amen? Well, now I'm this, I'm this, you know, we just, we, we know, we come out from, now we have some of our bishops. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about it. Praise the Lord. Some of our own bishops at, 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 uh, at, at uh, wedding, at the wedding, dancing on the dance floor. Oh, you know, we're just having a good time. Man, you sanctified. Hello? Anybody think I'm wrong? Thank you for not raising your hand. God bless you. We're supposed to be what? Sanctify. We're supposed to come out from among them. This was on the Facebook. I told you all this stuff on Facebook. See, sometimes people just bring stuff to me on Facebook, and I got to a place where I'm like, I don't even want to see this stuff no more. I got too many things to be thinking about than looking at all these sinners supposed to be saved on Facebook. Praise the Lord. Amen? At the wedding, dancing. Amen? To what I think they were playing in memory subject, Greg. They were playing the 1950s music, whatever it was. I can't remember what it was. Praise the Lord. It was a bunch of nonsense. In the church, we're sanctified now. At the be at the bishops at the beach with their bikinis on. Well, somebody said, "What's where? What's wrong with wearing a bathing suit? Why don't you cover up a little bit?" It's not wrong with swimming, but I don't have to have a speedo on to swim. That don't look good. That don't even I can't. That don't even imagine to look good. Praise the Lord. Bunch of nonsense. We're sanctified. You see how we just think, oh, let's just, everybody has one on. See, that's the mindset. Everybody's doing it. Love, not the world. I got a figure. Who cares about your figure? Keep your figure at home with your husband. Hello? See, we were taught these things before. You don't want to bring a stumbling block before somebody. You don't want to put those images out that people are thinking about you. Look at my, think about if one of your brothers in the church saw you, sister, at the, at the, at the, uh, at the, at the beach with a thong on. Y'all know what that is? Oh, you know, we just have to be, nobody want to see that. Now he got to come to church and think about you instead of thinking about this Bible. Or a brother who's supposed to be sanctified at the, at the, uh, at the beach with basically underwear on in the, in the, in the you see? Am I wrong? Am I right? You don't want nobody to... Mm -hmm. Now, I, well, I didn't mess your mind up. I got you. Let me get you back now. The point is this, but see, we were taught this stuff that we should be doing this. Oh, you saying, Pastor, I can't swim? I didn't say you can't swim, but you can be appropriate. Another thing we have to realize, why do you think that we don't do co-ed swimming at camp? You don't want them to be up in there Seeing each other, they 15, 16 years old, they can they can barely control themselves. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, I, you, I'm, I'm all right, Brother Noah. He's laughing at me. I'm telling the truth. All these hormones. We don't need to do that. I'm not wrong, but some people think I'm wrong. I'm too strict. I'm too hard. I'm coming down too hard, uh, Elder. I'm just trying to keep us. The Bible said it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we don't want to deal with the fact that these things are in the body. And we need to love not the world. So I don't want nobody coming telling me, Pastor, it's all right for you to be wearing your stuff out. It's not all right. Put some clothes on and be sanctified. Can the church say amen? Or, or swim in your backyard? Can the church say amen? Praise the Lord. It didn't be careful even then. All right? Let's read it. I love not the world, any things in the world. Read. If any man love the world, love, the love of the Father is not in him. Read. For this is what is in the world. Read. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride. These are the three points the three points of temptation. The enemy tempts you with the lust of the flesh. He tempts you with the eye gate. And he tempts you with the pride of life. Now, the pride of life, whether people know it or not, is probably one of the worst ones. 
is the inability to see one's own self. Praise the Lord. It's the headiness, the high-mindedness, the ability to come down under the hand of God and allow God to work on oneself. Can the church say amen? Because the pride of life has to do with wanting, desiring, and not being willing to come down. Can the church say amen? A lack of humbleness. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Verses, numbers, let me see here. Pride of life is not of the Father, but is of what? The world. Verses 17. And the world, now why, sh now this, this is the point. Why shouldn't the apostolic believer be in love with the world? Because everything that is involved with the system that the world operates by, the world operates by these three basic principles, the lust of their flesh, the, what they desire to see, and the pride that is in their heart. And Jesus says this, or excuse me, John says this, for what? For the world passeth away. And what happens? And the lust thereof, everything that's in the world is going away. Okay, somebody said, well, pastor, prove it to me. Thank you for asking. All right, let's go down to 2 John, I think it is. I want you to catch this now. 1 John, excuse me. 1 John? Praise the Lord. I'm going to get this scripture for you because it just came to my mind. So when somebody said, we're going to read it. Yes. 2 John, chapter 3. Everything that's in this world is passing away, including these bodies. Praise the Lord. There have been some of the most famous, beautiful people that ever existed, and they all got old and died. Who was a very beautiful woman? Elizabeth, what was it? Who was it the girl, the lady name back in the day? Elizabeth Taylor. People thought that she was probably one of the most beautiful women that ever lived. And she was. But guess what? She got old too. And she passed away. And everybody that lusted after her, their lust went away with her. They have nobody lust. I'm just trying to make a point. You understand me? And I'm not trying to be, be, be disrespectful. I'm trying to make a point. People lusting after all this stuff, lusting after these stars, lusting after these, these, these figures, lusting after what they want. That stuff is going away. That stuff don't mean nothing. nothing. So this scripture I'm going to give you is going to make the point that all that stuff is going to pass away. So let's go down to uh, chapter 3 and verse 10. It is going to go one day. And when it's gone, it's gone. And ain't coming back. Can the church say, man, I look at those. Somebody came to my office one day, uh, uh, Sister Hayes, and they saw a picture of me and Tamara. And they didn't say nothing about Tamara. They just looked at me and said, Pastor, what happened? <laughs> it's okay. I didn't get offended. See, it's hard. You, it's hard to get me offended. I, 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 it was okay. Because something did happen. 20 years of marriage happened. Praise the Lord. It's okay. All things pass away. The Bible said <laughs> that the flesh is grass, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God will last forever. I'm trying to help us understand. Living holy will get you to live forever with God. Because remember, young people, y'all, anybody here young? Young people, you better remember this. Remember, your pastor told you this a long time ago when you were young. You keep living, and you're going to get old too. But if you live for God, you will have an existence for eternity. So give God, as Bishop Paddock said, he made this very profound statement. He says, give God the best of your life. Give God your youth. Your youth is your strength. The Bible said he called the young because they're strong. When you're young, you have power. You have strength. You have, you have the ability to give God 
your vigor. And I thank God that he's allowed me to do that as a young man. I've given God the best years of my life. I remember coming down, Sister Sharon, to the church. We were doing stuff around here, and the brothers was, was uh, walking around. We were moving stuff, and, and, and Bishop would have a project. And I was 21, 22 years old. I just picked one of them bitches up and put it on my shoulders and walk off with it. Bishop was like, well, come on, son. We got to think about this. You know, because he, you know, he had dollies and all that type of stuff. Yeah. But you know what? God has rewarded me for that. Because I gave God my what? Strength. I ain't picking up no bitches no more. I'm able to pick one up and move it for a little bit, but sometime I'll tell you what's starting to happen to me now. Y'all may get a kick out of this. I'm trying to tell you how things pass away. There was a time when I used to be able to do something and wouldn't feel anything the next day. Didn't, I didn't feel nothing. But now I do something with my kids. I'm like, why I feel like this? And I got to think about, it. what did I do? And it take a couple days before my body get realigned. I'm trying to help you to understand stuff going to pass away. <laughs> you know what I'm doing. Okay, so, okay. Let me, let me get back to the text here now. We got to let you go in a little bit, all right? This is to let you understand that the elements in this world and the things that man thinks that are important are leaving us. The foundations of this earth are going to fade away. Verses numbers 10, chapter number 3, first, second Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. All right, when you have it, can you say I'm there? Let's read it now. The day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. Now, the day of the Lord in this text is twofold. The day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night, and the rapture is the first element of the day of the Lord. The second element of the day of the Lord is what we're going to see here. All right, read. In which the heavens shall what? Pass away with a great noise. Did we, did not, did we not say the world passes away? Now I want you to read this scripture to help you understand. The heavens and the earth are going to pass away as we know it. Read. All right, and the elements shall melt with what? Fervent heat. God is going to renovate the heavens and the earth by fire. Everything that man thinks is so important, he's going to purify the earth with fire. He's going to cleanse the earth. And everything that man thinks is so important down here that they didn't build all their life, is, life on is all going to be done away with. And he's going to emerge a new heaven and new earth and where there will be no sin and there will be peace on earth and goodwill toward man. So everybody's worrying about what's happening with the Kardashians. The Jezebels, that's what I call them, a bunch of Jezebels. Amen? Okay, people get mad. This is the truth. They can't stay married to save their life. Amen? I know, maybe I'm a little too blunt, but you get the picture. If you, if you look at them, you can tell, look, look at them out there looking crazy. Praise the Lord. Everybody's worrying about these figures in the world. Don't worry about them. Worry about being right with God when the heavens and earth pass away. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Somebody say, you're too blunt, but I'm being honest with you. See, sometimes we need some shock factor. I'm giving you some shock factor tonight. I'll be a little bit more controlled in another Bible class. But the point is that when our fathers was telling us this, that these days will come, what they will call right, wrong, and wrong, right, it's happening. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Elements shall melt with fervent heat, read, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Read it now. Read. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What? The heavens and the earth will be dissolved. What manner of person ought ye to be? In See, here's the problem. I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm, I'm trying to make a point that the Holy Ghost is in this. Because I didn't intend on reading this. But this is exactly what our Bible class is dealing with. Can the church say, man, everything's going away. Your Facebook page is leaving. Your Twitter account is leaving. Your TikTok, your Snapchat, all that stuff going away. While people snapping and TikToking and YouTubing all in the flesh and Facebooking all in the flesh, 
What the Bible said, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Because remember, God has got an account of everything that a man does in secret. Can the church say amen? Praise the Lord. So we have to hasten to the will of God. Verses 12, read, looking, read, thank you all to see it's in there, looking for and hastening unto the day of God. Somebody say the day of God. Read, where in the heavens, the day of God is when the heavens or the, if the day of God, if memory serves me correct, has to do with the seventh day of creation when this will take place. Praise the Lord. The day of God, read, and we're in the heavens being what? On fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt. Somebody say, it shall melt. All this stuff going to melt. Your iPhone going to melt. Your Android going to melt. Your computer going to melt. All that stuff is going to melt. And we have to be ready when Jesus comes. That's all we're trying to talk about today is just be holy. And I'm not worrying about what no sinner's doing. So the point is simply this, don't bring to me what them sinners doing. And I'm going to tell you exactly, those are our television audience, sinners are going to practice sin. That's exactly what I did. I lied, I cussed, I cheated, I fornicated, praise the Lord. I, had, I was covetous. That's what I did after, or excuse me, before I came to Christ. Praise the Lord. Let me show you that in the Bible. This is what we were, but thanks be to God. Let's go now. Let's look at what Paul said concerning what he was. We got to move on here now. Talking about your faith. I'm going to say your faith. Got to have faith. Praise the Lord. See, the Bible said, the word of God unto the Jews or to Israel not being mixed with faith did not profit them. Can the church say amen? Let me see the scripture I wanted you to go to. Romans, Romans. See, we did thank God because when we couldn't do, even though the will was present with us, God was able to help us through the new birth experience and our faith reaching out to God to perform what he wanted me to do. I believe this. If a person wants to be saved, they can be saved under any present condition. Paul was saved in prison. Amen? But here's the problem sometimes. Many apostolics can only be saved when conditions suit their mentality of what salvation should be like. See, some people think that being saved, you should never have to deal with nothing. It's the truth. Or being saved, nobody's going to say nothing about you. Nobody's going to lie on you. Praise the Lord. Now we sometimes, I said this one time, I think I was talking to my wife, I said, what we have to realize, uh, Tamar Richardson, is that sometimes the past lifestyle and condition that we lived in, we have to reap some of those things in mercy as we walk with God. It's just that simple. Now, that's what happened with Paul because Paul was consented to the death of saints. So God was merciful to Paul, but Paul had to get some whoopings because he was responsible for believers passing away. He persecuted what? The saints. Some people think, well, I'm saved now, I'm supposed to get off scot free. In the church, say amen. Now, I can get saved, but I may have to still deal with the fact that if I was always mean to people, somebody may be mean to me. I'm talking about before I was saved. If, if, people, if I didn't speak to people, it wasn't nice to people, it wasn't cordial, then maybe I'm going to have some people on my job, that coworker that sit right next to you and does nothing but give you problems. God may say, I'm going to let you deal with that person for one year because I'm perfecting holiness in you. <laughs> I've had it. 
I've had guys that I work with, and it was like, this brother will not do right. And I got to deal with this. And I had to sit there and smile and say, thank you, Jesus. Because maybe there was somebody else that I did wrong. Can the church say amen? All right. I got to let you go here now. Mm -hmm. Let's pick it up here. Let me see here. We got to read through this quickly. I got about 15 minutes. All right. Let's start with verses 18. Chapter number 7, verse 18 of Romans. Somebody say Romans. Romans 7 and 18. Praise the Lord. This is powerful. Powerful stuff. Paul is speaking about his condition prior to him being born again. This is his prior condition before he was born again of water and the spirit. Let's read it now. For I know that it's in me. We have to know this. This is something we have to know as believers that we're going to be holy. For I know that is in me, in my what? Flesh. Is what? Well, there's no good thing. Stop right there. We think, I'm just talking about, I'm not, when I say we, I'm talking about humanity thinks too much of itself. Because, Sister Julian, we have been taught what I would like to call the law of preservation. At all costs, we have been taught to take care of ourselves and to prefer ourselves over anybody else. That's the way the fallen nature is. It's about me. But if you read in the scripture, once God, Brother Noah, saves the believer, he begins to strip away from the believers his individuality in his thought process of himself and place you in the mentality of working together. Can the church say amen? And in working together, you and I, we have to give up a piece of ourself. Anybody ever won a championship of any kind here? Well, you was on a team. You was on a team, right? There may have been some things, Brother Casey, you could have done better than somebody else. But because of the sake of the team, you have to maybe sacrifice that part of yourself to work together within the confines of a team to get a goal accomplished. I told you this before. If you're on a basketball team and you shoot 10% from the three-point line, the coach is going to tell you, I don't care if you're wide open. Pass the ball. If he, if he has any measure of knowledge or wisdom, isn't that right, Brother Richardson? Pass the ball, Kobe. The point I'm saying, I'm joking. You have to pass the ball and get it to somebody else on the team that that's their job. Because there may be a guy on the other side of the court, that's what he's on the team to do. You go get a rebound. You need to go and pass the ball and shoot. You get what I'm saying? But when we get saved sometimes, God is saying, don't do this. Do what you're supposed to do for the betterment of fulfilling the team aspect and the goal of what God wants us to do together. Can the church say amen? Somebody say, well, Pastor, why did you go to that soliloquy? I don't know. It sounded good. Let's go now back to the scripture. All right, let's go now. Um, dwell is no good thing. Read. For the will is present with me, even if the desire is there. Read. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Why? Because in the flesh is no good thing. Holiness is not produced out of the flesh. The fallen nature does not produce holiness. The body does not produce holiness. Your body wants to be at home right now, trust me. Your body wants to be laying in the bed or, or eating some ice cream or eating your favorite dinner and watching your favorite television show. Everybody's flesh wants to do that. Isn't that right, Sister uh, Seawood? But you made your flesh get to church at night, didn't you? You made it flesh, didn't you? Praise the Lord. You said, no, you getting up. You coming down here because you're going to be holy. <laughs> church, say amen. So the point he's saying is that in the body, there is no elements that is redeemable to produce good. So therefore, I cannot live unto the what? Flesh. Because in the flesh is nothing good. Oh, and how Deacon Garner, man, loves their body. Oh, I love, people love their flesh. They pet it, they pamper it. They take it to the spa. 
They get the feet done on the flesh and get the fingers done and the hair done. No, I'm not saying anything wrong with that, getting the pedicure. I need to get one, praise the Lord. I ain't never. I was telling my wife, I need to go down there and let them take care of me because I need some help, praise the Lord. But that's not the point. The point is that if I'm taking care of the flesh, but I don't take care of the spirit, it's like a barometer that Bishop used to always say. When the flesh is up, the spirit is down. I need to tip the scales in the spirit's favor. So when you come into the house of God, you receive his word, you're tipping the scales in the favor of holiness. So Paul is saying, when I was under the law, walking in my flesh, there was no good thing in me. And every now and then, God puts the mirror of his word up, and he lets me look at this vile body that I love so much and says, you better stop loving it and love me more. Because one of these days, that body's going to decay. It's going to get old. It's going to pass away. But what equity have we built up in the spiritual man? Can the church say amen? Mm -hmm. Verses, numbers, and 19. Read. For the good that I, I would, I do not. The good that I want to do, I can't do it. Read. But the evil which I would not, the, I, that I do. The, he, what he's saying is he's dealing with the conflict that is in his nature. I want to stop, but I can't because in this flesh is no good thing. And now there's something that is fighting against me, and I can't overcome it. Do you follow what I'm trying to say? All right, read. Now if I do that which would not, if I'm doing that which I would not, it is, it is no more. It, it, it says, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Read. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Somebody say the devil's present with you. That's not true. The devil's not present with everybody all the time. What he is saying is that the body, the fallen nature is always present. The fallen nature is always there. And we have to check it. Because Satan is simply a singular spirit. He is not everywhere all the time. I say, well, you know, Flip Wilson many years ago had that foolish show, The Devil. He's always talking about the devil made me do it. Bunch of nonsense. The devil don't make nobody do nothing. The devil presents and his spirits present the, how can I say, the opportunity or the influence of temptation to do so but it doesn't make anybody do anything. Do you follow what I'm trying to say? God bless you. Let's read it now, we're almost done. Read, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. Read, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. He said, I, I, in the inward man, I want to do the right thing, but he sees there's another law in the members, this warring against that law that God is trying to put in our mind to do the right thing. Read it now. Oh, now here's the conclusion. Oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from the body of this death? Now here is the conclusion of how God changes the wretched condition of the believer, or excuse me, of the individual before they receive salvation. Read. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. With the flesh, the law of sin. One last verse here now, as we get let you go, because I ran out of time. Hosea chapter 7. This goes back to what I said earlier about the condition of Israel. And this shows us the mentality and condition of the, somebody say, the backslider. Is this what we wanted here? This will hinder our ability to contend for our faith and produce holiness. Somebody say being mixed. 
All right, last verse here now. Ephraim hath what? All right, Jose, chapter 7, verse 8. Are we there? Last verse tonight. Ephraim, what? He has mixed himself. Now, what did Ephraim mix himself with? Now, remember, Ephraim is a type of the backslider, a type of the individual that's filled with his own way. Has what? Mixed himself among what? The people. Read, Ephraim is a cake not turned, or a Ephraim is undone. Now remember, cakes in that day would not put in an oven. Were they? Anybody ever had hot water cornbread? Uh-huh. Their cakes were baked, their cakes were cooked. What we would call a frying pan, a skillet of some sort. Amen? What they were saying, they would he they, they were done on one side and unfinished on the other. They were not prepared because they were mixed. They wasn't ready. So if I mix with the backslider, if I mix with the world, I will be like Ephraim. Have done and not ready. Someone said, I want to be ready. My dear sister sings the song so eloquently. I want to be more like Jesus every day. So get the Bible class so you'll be done. Because then when the rapture takes place, it's going to be a whole lot of saints that won't be done. They, their work won't be done, their life won't be ready, and next thing you know, they'll look up and, and they'll be lost. And they'll be have, we will have nobody else to blame, and God will bring back to one's remembrance every word that they did not come in here. I've been saying this for years, and people think I'm just some, and I said this earlier, I want to cut that tape.